Let's start learning. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Mr. Tom Teaches Again. Today, we'll look at the building blocks of English grammar, the eight parts of speech. Wow. Practically every word in English falls under one of these categories. Wow. And we don't have to understand these parts of speech to speak fluent English. Ooh. But if we understand how English works, we can learn to speak it correctly. Now, two things before we get into an overview of the eight parts of speech. First, probably the most basic rule in English grammar is there is almost always an exception to every rule. That means that grammar rules apply in most cases, but not always all. Second, English is a living language. Rules and what is acceptable do change over time, or may be different from location to location. All right. Now that we have that out of the way, we can take a look at the eight parts of speech in English. Here they are. Nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. Let's look at each one briefly. Some people call nouns naming words. That's because nouns name persons, places, things, and ideas. Recently, I've noticed that animals is placed in the list to separate them from mere things. I don't think of my cats as things. Nouns name persons: teacher, baker, Mrs. Smith. Nouns name places: home, the store, Antarctica. Nouns name animals: dog, cat, turtle. Nouns name things: rock, chair, building. And nouns name ideas: honesty, truth, love. Next, pronouns. Listen to this sentence: Thomas bought Jen the cake, and Jen told Thomas that the cake was delicious. Now listen again: Thomas bought Jen the cake, and she told him it was delicious. Notice the difference? We don't repeat Thomas, Jen, and cake. We use pronouns to replace these words. In the second sentence, she, him, and it are pronouns. Instead of repeating nouns over and over, we use pronouns to streamline our speech and writing. Some common pronouns are I, me, we, you, us, he, she, it, they, and them. Third, we have verbs. Verbs are mainly used to show action or state of being. Action is easy. He jumps. They bought pizza for dinner. The argument escalated into a fight. Our verbs are jumps, bought, and escalated. All three show action. Verbs can also show state of being. What does that mean?、Huh? Well, a state of being is how something is. For example, look at these sentences. The young lady is happy. After so many tacos, Eddie felt sick. In the first sentence, "is" helps to tell us something about the young lady. It's not an action; it connects a word that describes the young lady's state of being or how she is to the main subject in the sentence, "lady." In the second sentence, we can ask, "How was Eddie? What was Eddie's state of being? He was sick, or he felt sick." We know that felt isn't an action verb because the action verb felt means to have touched something or gotten a sense of it. In this case, felt is a state of being verb. It connects the main subject, Eddie, to a word that says something about how he was sick. A few common linking verbs are am, is, are, was, were, has been, have been, and had been. There's a lot more, and we'll look at those later. Okay, we've done nouns, pronouns, and verbs. English also allows us to describe how things are or how they act. Adjectives and adverbs are describing words. Adjectives are words that describe nouns. The tall man, the mysterious secret, the colorful wallpaper. Tall, mysterious, and colorful. Are all adjectives? Adjectives tell something about a noun. They generally answer the questions: which one, what kind, 
how many or how much. Adjectives usually come right before or almost before the noun they describe or modify. That tall building is the Empire State Building. Our adjective in that sentence is tall. It comes before the word it describes, building. Okay, that's adjectives. The second kind of describing word is an adverb, but adverbs are a little different. Adverbs mostly describe verbs, but adverbs can also describe adjectives or other adverbs. Today, we'll just focus on how they describe verbs. Here are some examples. He walked quickly down the street. Suddenly, the geyser erupted. She quietly sat down and waited. Our adverbs are quickly, suddenly, and quietly. A clue that a word is an adverb is that it ends in L-Y. That isn't always the case, but it helps us to find an adverb. Adverbs answer the questions where, when, why, how, and to what extent or degree. How did he walk down the street? Quickly. How did the geyser erupt? Suddenly. How did she sit down? Quietly. Adverbs can also be in different places in a sentence. Look at our three sentences again. Look at where the adverbs are in each sentence. He walked quickly down the street. Suddenly, the geyser erupted. She quietly sat down and waited. Adverbs can come before or after the word they describe. That brings us to our last three parts of speech. Prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. Prepositions are words that set up a connection or relationship to another word. They explain something about a word. A preposition usually begins a prepositional phrase or a group of words that go along with the preposition. Here's an example. Letitia strolled along the waterfront. In this sentence, our preposition is along. It begins the prepositional phrase along the waterfront. In this case, along the waterfront describes strolled. The phrase acts like an adverb and tells us where Letitia strolled. One more example. The burger without onions is mine. Our preposition is without, and our prepositional phrase is without onions. What kind of burger is it? It's a burger without onions. Our prepositional phrase describes a noun, burger. The phrase acts like an adjective. Some common prepositions include in, into, to, toward, of, with, over, and under. That brings us to conjunctions. An old schoolhouse rock video asks, Conjunction, junction, what's your function? A junction is a place that joins two things, like train tracks, together. Conjunctions are words that connect. They can connect words, phrases, and clauses. We'll get into what all of those are later. Some basic conjunctions are and, for, but, nor, yet, so, and for. Here's an example. Joanne asked for hot dogs and sauerkraut. Our conjunction is and. It joins the two nouns, hot dogs and sauerkraut. One more example. Valerie felt tired, but she still helped to fold laundry. Our conjunction is but. Here, but joins two independent thoughts. Valerie felt tired, and she helped to fold laundry. And last on the list of parts of speech, we've got interjections. Interjections are words or phrases that express strong feelings. We use them all the time. Words like, wow, oh, gosh, are interjections. Wow, I love your sweater. Oh no, I dropped the picture. What a good idea. Our interjections are wow, oh no, and the whole phrase, what a good idea. Most interjections can stand on their own, even without a sentence. Let's review. Well, there you have it. In the English language, we have eight basic parts of speech. Nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. Take a look at something you read and see if you can find all eight parts of speech.
Nice work, everyone. Parents, teachers, and homework helpers, please be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. A like will really help the channel, so please give us a thumbs up. Thank you so much for being here today. I look forward to seeing you again. Take care, and remember, it never hurts to be nice.